you put it over there closer to the light on this side kind of the right hand thing in terms of what we do uh, as people come in if you would yeah just kind of block that side if you will yeah all right good morning good morning good 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 give me the cue all right oh grace and peace be to you uh, in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, it is a delight again, once again, to see all of you. We are grateful and thankful to God just for the, uh, just the tremendous blessing of life that God has granted us and just allowing us uh, the chance of, of gathering together as we do. The Bible tells us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, and so there are opportunities that are presented to us uh, as, a, as a church family. Uh, whether it's midweek or Sunday mornings that we gather together for the purpose of uh, prayer as we're doing today and also for the study of, uh, of God's word. I think this year, this, I think if I'm saying it correctly, I think this year probably marks for sure 25 years that we've been doing the, the morning Bible study. Uh, if not just a little bit longer than that, but definitely, uh, I know since 97 we've been doing it. So we're grateful uh, once again, thankful for just this uh, privilege that God has granted us uh, to be able to gather on, uh, on this particular day for the purpose, again, of prayer and the study of God's word. We're going we're gonna to pause. We're going to go to God in prayer, and then we're going to jump right into our lesson for today. Uh, the other thing that we're going to do is right as we are uh, uh, finishing up this evening, uh, the, uh, today, the, uh, um, the time that we have for our general report, we talked about having our uh, our uh, business meeting on tonight uh, but we're going to just go ahead and do that uh, at this particular hour so we're going to just encourage everybody just to kind of set yourself for that uh, probably another another whatever 10 15 minutes past for maybe what we normally would do so uh, we're going to give that report uh, before we uh, before we leave uh, in our uh, in our session on today so uh, once again we're just going to pause say go to God in prayer we'll go go to our lesson and then right after we do the lesson, we're going to give our, uh, our general reports, if you would, for uh, what we, what God allowed a good shepherd to do in the year of uh, 20 and uh, 21. Um, once again, Lord, thank you so much just for this privilege that you've granted us. It's clear to us that we, we know there's nothing that we've done that says we deserve it. So it must be your grace. And we are so thankful and grateful for your grace that allows us the privilege and allows us the opportunity to gather together. Uh, first of all, just to be able to wake up this morning, we know it was a privilege of your grace. And so we thank you, God, for awakening us to a new day and a new start, a new beginning, a day that represents the first day of the rest of our lives. And so we are grateful, Lord. Uh, for uh, for the privilege that you have uh, granted us in this day. And so I ask, Lord, that you would just continue to um, forgive us for our sins because we do know we have done some things. Uh, we've said some things, and even in our thoughts, we have uh, have not been pleasing to you. So we ask, Lord, that you would forgive us for our sins. And then, again, we say thank you just for this privilege uh, that you allow us to gather together for the purpose, again, of prayer and for the purpose of the study of your word, and we pray in every way, Lord, that you will be glorified. So even as we stand, we pray for Christy Ellison, Lord, who had a major stroke, major stroke, and uh, had to do major uh, emergency surgery on her brain. So, Father, I pray for Christy that you would deliver as you would see fit. I pray for Miss Almira. I pray for uh, Ramel uh, in their concerns again for their daughter and their sister, respectively. I pray for Raven. And the rest of the children, Lord, that you would just continue to, uh, to allow their minds to be focused on you uh, and to recognize that she is in a, in a very, very dire state. But at the end of the day, we know ultimately you're in control of all things. 
and uh, we commend, we definitely commend her to you. Certainly pray for our sister in Lake Charles, Emily Collins. Uh, you know what Emily is experiencing, what she's going through. And uh, God, whatever it is that you are allowing in her life, uh, we thank you, God, for knowing that you, you prepared her many, many years uh, for what she is going through right now. That is not catching you by surprise. Uh, you have already instilled her with your Holy Spirit. You've given her your word. Uh, you even told us that, that the possibility would even be there. So we pray that as she goes through the, uh, the treatments of radiation for the cancer uh, that is in her, on, on her lungs, God, we pray that all would work well. We pray for healing as you would see fit. Uh, we pray, God, as she moves to radiation, that the radiation would do what it, it is supposed to do. Um, we pray that as she moves to chemotherapy, that it does what it is supposed to do. Because we know, Lord, at the end of the day, you got the last word on everything. And uh, so we entrust her to you and ask again your continued grace and mercy uh, continue to be in her life. I thank you, God, for her faith. I thank you, God, for her, her focus. I thank you for JT and for how they are viewing this thing and, uh, and recognizing that they know that they are people uh, just like Job was not exempt. Just as Jesus was not exempt, they recognize that they're not exempt. And so we, uh, we, again, we lift them before you and ask again your continued grace and mercy. Continue praying for the Collins family, um, the Conley family in their uh, recovery, Lord, uh, in their the bereavement and through their grief. We ask again you continue to keep them as only you can, not only them, but for all families that are going through. We certainly pray for those families of those police officers that have been murdered uh, here and in other states of the United States, God. We just lift those families before you. We pray for those who um, committed those crimes. God, we pray that justice would prevail. And we pray that even in that justice, if you would choose to save them, Lord, that your grace and your mercy would prevail in that manner. Uh, we, 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 lo we know you have the power. We know what you're capable of doing. And so we entrust, we entrust them to you, Father. Uh, and ask again that you would just have your way. Do what you do best. Demonstrate to us all the time that you are God. You have not yet converted. You have not yet given over power to no human being. You are still God. You are still in control. You still sovereignly rule. You still got the peace. You still got the power. It still all belongs to you. And so help us as believers to remember that reality and to always live in that reality. And that everything that we say, everything that we do, every way that we think, Lord, we're always processing it through your word, always recognizing that what you say is ultimately what will happen, and that, and that you, you give us the ability to adjust our lives to your will, your way, and your word, so that we can live life peaceably, we can live life in reverence, we can live life uh, with some pain, but still giving you praise. We can live life with some hurt, but still got hope. We can live life knowing that we may experience death, but we also know you've delivered us from the power of, of death through the power of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom you allowed to die, but raised from the dead on the third day with all power and all authority. So we have the hope, Lord, that even if we die on this side, we have the hope of resurrection uh, that you've promised to those of us who believe you. It is this prayer we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. The handout that, uh, that we have, we've been working through uh, just the, uh, the issue again. Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. We started that the, uh, the first, I guess maybe the second Saturday of this particular month. Uh, Chief, if you all yeah, would, just bring some more handouts, a few more if you all will. Uh, we started, started that the, I think, January the 8th. Uh, again, Lord, teach us to pray. And we're just still going to go through that. So I'm just encouraging you for the uh, next, for this, definitely for this week, and even for next week, uh, to bring that hand out, because we just kind of continue, want to continue to work through that. And the reason that we're doing so is because we recognize that there, that there are some prayers that God has given us in the Word. There are prayers, there are things that God has given us to pray about in His Word. And when we met on week before last, we actually dealt with uh, the page one that you have, the prayers in the New Testament. We dealt again with the issue of, again, the manner that Jesus taught us to pray. We, we dealt with the importance of understanding that we need uh, for God to forgive us our trespasses, just as 
he forgave others, and we had the passages that went along with that. We looked, talked about that the uh, uh, week before last. But this week, again, we want to continue to focus on uh, how do we work through these issues as far as prayer are concerned based upon the scripture. Uh, as you all know, I said it to you before, I had, I had a, a question that came, uh, or no, no, a statement that came from one of my friends, Dr. Darren Moore, who actually said, he said, Skin, I find myself, I don't pray like Paul. I say to him, man, what do you mean, man? He said, I don't pray like Paul. And I actually thought about that because when you look in the Bible that there are certain prayers that God has given us that many times when we pray, we don't pray like that. That, 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 that so many of our prayers uh, kind of probably, in a very real sense, constitutes more of what's happening in the physical than it is in the spiritual. Understand this. No matter what we go through, every human being can go through what we go through physically. We can, human, people who believe and don't believe get cancer. People who believe and don't believe have heart problems. People who believe and don't believe, whatever disease a human being can have, doesn't matter if you're a believer or not, you can have it. However, what God has called us to understand that we are different in the sense, again, for those who don't believe, that may pray from a physical standpoint, but our goal ultimately is to understand that God has given us his spirit. And so our prayers ought to be more from the standpoint of those spiritual things that God has blessed us with so that when we go through what we go through physically, we handle it differently. Does it make sense? Because admit it, we all going to go through, the Bible clearly says, the sun rises on the just as well as the unjust. He causes his rain to fall on what the, on the righteous and on the unrighteous. So what he teaches us, that we are not exempt from things happening to us that's no different than the world. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't make me a better saint because the Lord allowed me to go through cancer and I came through it. No, no. What, 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 what leads to that is how I went through it. Because when you think about it, if we're going to just do again humanly what every other human, used, uh, every other human being does, like we're talking about Emily Collins right now, Emily's going through radiation right now for the, uh, the issue of her lung cancer. She's dealing with that right now. However, there are a whole lot of other folk who are going through the same thing that Emily is going through physically. But how does she handle that spiritually is what God has given you and I. And those are the things that we pray about, or we ought to pray about, that gives us strength, it gives us focus, it gives us a right view of what we're, uh, what we're going through, what we're experiencing. And those are the things that we find in the prayers that God has given us in his word. And so, you know, we, one of the things that we do uh, when we meet uh, on, on Monday nights, uh, thank God again, last Monday we met and we started, we, we do what we call the acts, the adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Uh, and when you think about adoration, and again, I'm, now I'm, I'm, on, I'm at the handout now, at the bottom of the handout, uh, prayers of adoration. What is that? It is the act of speaking honor to who God is and what he does. And so um, uh, God, is, God is our father. And so when we pray to him, what we want to do, we want to pray back to God who he is. We want our prayers to announce that I know who you are. And I want to do that before I start asking him for anything. Does that make sense? I know, I know you're my father. I know you're awesome. I know you're I, all of those things. I want, I want to go. And, and of course, what, you know, what I did, what I did here is just basically going through the dictionary and just looking at words that reminded me of who God is. And in prayer, we pray that back to God. So I always say that I have the capacity to pray back to God who he is from A to Z. That's why, again, it starts with the fact that say he's awesome, but then it also ends by saying he's the zenith of all, meaning that he is above all. He is greater than all. And I want to pray that back to him. I want to say those things to him. I think all of us love to be adored, don't we? You love to be told you're doing a good job. 
You love to be told, I like the way you handle that. You love to be told, you are beautiful, you are handsome. We love to be told those things. It motivates us some kind of way, right? But what we understand, what the reason that we do it for God is not that we add anything to him. It's, it's showing that we recognize him for who he is. Yeah, so when I say, God, you are awesome, oh, yeah, it's, it's I am in awe of you. Remember what I told y'all, you know, wake up in the morning normally about, about 6.30. That's my time to get up, and, and that's the time to go to pray. And, and I pray for, y'all let me say it before, I pray for is some folk in, a, in the Pacific Islands, Nuku Alofa. Right now in Nuku Alofa, it is, it's already, well, yeah, they already, it's, 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 it's right now Wednesday for us, right? It's Thursday for them. They are 19 hours ahead of us. So whatever that is, we got the rest of the day, it's already Thursday over there. But watch this. We're right here, and somewhere in this world is already tomorrow. And what's today for them is now yesterday. <laughs> for for y'all get what I'm saying? So, so, so. You, we are what? In awe. We ought to be in awe of God. And tell him that. And, and not be so quick to, to rush to what I want. <laughs> Let me tell you about who I think of you. All right, let's just, just uh, looking at, at the second page. Uh, and that's what we're going to focus on today. Are uh, the prayers of confession. The prayers of confession. That's what I want to focus on today as, 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 uh, as, uh, as, as through our study. Hopefully we can unpack that for the, uh, the rest of the time that God will give us today. We're going to finish the rest of it on, uh, on next week or the next time that we meet. Um, what, what, what does it mean, the prayer of confession? Because the reason I say that, because too many times we pray and we say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lord, forgive me for all of my sins. Well, remember, the Holy Spirit lives in us, right? And because he lives in us, there's nothing that we do contrary to the word of God that he's not going to bring to our attention. Amen? Can I? Am I does it make sense? Whatever word, whatever deed, whatever thought I may have, the Holy Spirit is going to say to me, Lee, hey, 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 hey. And so, and, so, and so the reality is I need to even confess my sins of thought. Those things that come in my mind that are contrary to the will of God, uh, because those are the things that he told me to pray for, right? All right, so, so when, you, when you look at that, what do we mean when we talk about prayers of confession? It's to acknowledge and admit a fact publicly, often in reference to previous bad behavior. Now, when we say publicly, I am not suggesting at all that when you pray in this setting, that you tell God everything in our hearing. That ain't what I'm saying at all. What I am saying, confession basically says that I'm openly saying it to God. That's why, again, remember one of the things that we did uh, 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 when we, we went through uh, Matthew 6. Remember, he says, we're to go what in our secret closet. And when we go to our secret closet, that's where we express to God. All of the issues that are going on in our lives. Because here's the reality, y'all. We are saved, right? We've been saved by the blood of Jesus. We have, we have put our faith, our trust, our confidence in Jesus Christ as our personal sin bearer. That Jesus died in our stead. He died for our sins. So we know our sins have been forgiven because of Jesus Christ. Correct? But, but, do, do we still have some Flesh stuff we got to deal with? We do, don't we? Yeah, Joe, please. That's exactly it, Joe. Thank you, bro. Because cause, cause the, word, the word confess actually means, it means to say it publicly. It's, a, it's fancy, fancy. Again, the, the, uh, the original language, the Greek word is the word homologamon. 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 And it literally means to say the same thing publicly. And in our case, what are we saying? Who is the one who hears us? It's God. 
So, 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 so what we look at is, is, is those issues that, so, so let's, let's work through this. Go, let's go to 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 through 10, because here we're dealing with the issue of confession. How do we, how do we, what do we need to confess? And uh, I can already tell you, if there's anybody who's thinking I don't need to confess anything, let's look at what God says. This is, uh, uh, I want to start, wait a minute, fire edification, that which I, which was from the beginning, that's verse one, uh, which I, which I, which we have heard and which we have seen and with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the father and was manifested to us. That's first John chapter one, at verse three now. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you may also have fellowship with us. Again, that koinonia, that same mindset, that, that thing, these things that we all have in common. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things write to you that, you, that you, your joy may be full. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Y'all hear that? If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But, we, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from sin. So we're talking about not only does it affect our fellowship with God, with Christ, but also our fellowship with each other is affected, right? So how do we handle that? When the, we get to those moments, those minutes in life that we're not getting along with each other like we should, we're not talking to God like we should, there's a disconnect uh, between us, or, you know, from the standpoint of our relationships with other believers and the like. How do we handle that? What do we do about that? Well, God has given us the answer in verse 8. He says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So again, anybody who's saying, I don't know if I got anything to confess, the Bible clearly saying you're deceiving yourself. We are deceiving ourselves. If I say I never sin. Wow. All right. All right. Now watch this. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So again, look again, verse number nine. If we confess our sins, there's an there's a if there, and it's a, what is called a subjunctive. And, and what it deals with is the probability. The probability for us is that we have sinned. And, and the probability is that we obey the command to confess our sins. But not only with the probability, there's also the word intentionality. That we intentionally confess our sins. We intentionally say what God says about our sins. We don't, we don't, we don't. We don't distinguish between a lie and a white lie. It's just a lie. We don't make it any less. Whatever it is that we've done, we confess it. We say this and we are intentional about it because at the end of the day, what we're, what we're recognizing is that it affects what our relationship with God and it affects our relationship what, with God with one another. The fellowship that we ought to have is not there. So he says that we ought to confess our, our sins and knowing this, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all. Of, now watch this. He's up again. Remember Jesus taught this in, uh, in Matthew chapter six. If I don't forgive, I'm not forgiven. But, but for me, God says, for us, God is saying that I've got to confess it. I've got to say it in order that. And, and, and why do you all think it's important to say it? Why do you think it's important to say what I did? To tell God what I did? He, Joe, you're right. He wants to hear it. Again, first of all, it's a command that he's given us, right? 
And he wants us to acknowledge that what I said, what I did, how I'm thinking is not aligning with his word. (laughs) Because if I ever get to the point that I confess that he's right and I'm wrong, does it make sense? Because that's where I want to go. I want I want to be in a position whereby I say what he says about my sin. Yeah, yeah. And so again, he reminds us to be again. He says, uh, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. And then again, here's the other thing that he does. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the good news, is that there's a promise that goes along with it. There's a principle that's said there, but there's a promise that goes, because he identified the problem. I need to confess my sin. Uh, but, th- that's the pr- but then again, he also gives me the promise that when I confess it, now I've got cleansing. I'm, I've, it cleanses me from all unrighteousness, because here's what, here's what, here's what happens, folks. My failure to confess sin leads to other sin that needs to be confessed. And it has a spiral effect. That it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on. And even to the point where folks start pointing to me I'm wrong, I still think I'm right. Because I'm not dealing with this stuff like I'm supposed to. You remember, again, you know, we, got, we got a wonderful example. Remember in, in, in Psalm 51, remember when David messed up, right? David should have been at, 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 at war with the other kings. The Bible says he's on the top of the house and he sees Bathsheba bathing. And he says, hey, go get that lady for me and bring her here, right? The Bible says, again, he sleeps with her. He, I know he has sex with her. He didn't sleep in bed. He had sex with her. Uh, later on, she give him the news, hey, I'm pregnant. So what, what does he do? He say, hey, man, I got to do something about this. Got her, her, her husband named Uriah. Say, hey, go get Uriah off the battlefield. Have him to come here. Bring him to my house. And... Um, Tell him I'm going to give him a little leave, vacation from the war. Go be with his wife. Hopefully, he has sex with her. Everything going to be over. Mm -hmm. Uriah reported to David the next morning. He's sleeping on his porch, Lord. Say, what? Hey, Uriah, what you doing, dude? He said, Uriah, I said, Lord, I couldn't. That's no way. I could have laid with my wife when my brothers are out there. On the battlefield. Okay, Uriah. Go ahead. All right, all right, I'll tell you what then. Right, let's get together, you and me. And y'all bring him some wine. Let's get him a little tipsy. Give him a little drunk. Give him a little high. And he's going he to he get the feeling. He's going to go be with his wife. It's going to all be over. Next day, same thing. David, David goes to uh, Joab. He says, hey, tell you what, go send him back to war. But put him on the front line. You just come back to David. Your eyes dead. Oh, well, you know, it's war. So it happens. Mm-hmm. He takes Bathsheba. He marries her. And one day Nathan the prophet came. Tells that story. Y'all remember to tell that wonderful story about a man having all of these sheep and all he had. All, but then there's one man who had one. And the man would all took that one that belonged to that man. And David said, get a rope. Nathan said, you the man. You the man. You got all this kingdom. Matter of fact, if you were to ask for another woman, God had gave it to you. But you had that one man's, you had that one man killed because he did right and you did wrong. Notice, David ain't trying to cover up nothing. The Bible said, he said, I sinned. And I've sinned against you, God. I I, I went against you. And that's how, that's how confession needs to be for us. Not delayed. When it's brought to our attention. Yeah, yeah. Lord, forgive me. Amen. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. So so now, so here's the, the other thing that we want to look at. What are what are in terms of con- we say confess our sins? The Bible says if we say, Roger, he did say it, right? If we say that we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So that what he's saying that there is the possibility, the probability that as you and I who are believers in Jesus Christ, we will still sin. Right? 
So the question becomes, what sins can we commit? Let's, let's look at that for just a moment. Go to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Because what again, what are we admitting? We still battle with the flesh, y'all. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, Paul actually says it. It's not, it's not listed on in the other handout that you have. I got Galatians 5, 19 through 21. But let's go to verse 16. I say then, walk in the spirit, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are what contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Well, that, 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 that statement right there, those verses right there are totally contrary to what Flip Wilson used to say. huh? Remember that? The devil. And listen, unfortunately, there are believers who still operate from the point that whatever it is I do wrong, the devil made me do it. It was the devil. Or if it wasn't the devil, it's because you got on my nerve. And let me, let me put it plainly. Sometimes we say, you piss me off. Mm -hmm. If you would have talked to me right, we would not be having this right now. Matter of fact, if you were to look at me different than what you just did. Am I, am I making sense? <laughs> so so it's, not, it's not the devil and it's not other people. It's this issue of us still struggling with the flesh, folk. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The closer we get to God, the more intense the struggle happens. Because you become much more conscious of what the flesh want to do. Am I making sense? I'll be honest with you. If we're not, if we're not growing as a believer, you know, it, it don't matter. Yeah, I used to have a cousin, and I, I'll tell him, I say, you know, and, and that was in my younger days, and I meant what I said. I'm going to say it, I said, I said, I said different now, but I'm just telling you how I said it then. He would say to me, He'd say to me, look, man, I made a deal with my conscience. If my conscience didn't bother me, I wouldn't bother my conscience. And in my younger days, I said, you going to hell. <laughs> I wouldn't hesitate. I said, man, you're going to go to hell. Because he said, I made a deal with my conscience. If my conscience don't bother me, I ain't going to even bother my conscience. So basically saying, I can do what I do, and I ain't going to let it bother me. So, so, but that is an indication of a person who is not maturing in Christ. If, 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 if we still have a sense that I can tell you whatever I want to tell you, the way I want to tell you, how I want to tell you, as long as I want to tell you, and you're going to listen to what I say until I tell you, and then come back later and say, I'm sorry. That's not mature. Because if I'm doing it over and over, and that's a habit now. That is a, that is a habit, an indication of immaturity, right? So, so these are the issues again. So he says, if we walk in the spirit, verse 6, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 18, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not, he says, under the law. And again, going back to the, uh, the, uh, the issue of, of, the, of the understanding that, our goal ultimately is to be led of the spirit of God who lives in us. And folk, what we always want to do is to be led of the spirit first, initially, right away, immediately, not delaying it. Because I think a lot <laughs> here's what our humanity tell us. If, if, if Henry mess over me, I got the right to be mad at Henry for a while. And I got a right to let Henry know, you done messed up, bro. 
And I can hold on to that as long. Now, why is it I'll be saying, oh, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a confess it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to forgive him. But right now, can I get a witness in here? Over there, can I? <laughs> right now, I'm going to hold on to this feeling. Hold on to this flesh. I'm going to hold on to this, what's going on in me. Watch this. And sometimes holding on to that and then saying, Jesus, keep me near the cross. Holding on to that. I'm like, I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Holding on to that stuff. And then turn around and be kind to other people. Holding on to that thing that I got for that other person, though. I'm talking about what the flesh, how the flesh wants to do, how the flesh wants to operate. So here, here is a listing, if you will. And so I'm just saying, just, just imagine we're praying. Lord, uh, you know, God, Father, our, our Father, our God, we ask that you forgive us for our sins and hear what they are. These are things that we want to say to God. We no longer want to pray, especially in our private prayers. Let's not be praying, Lord, forgive me for my sins. Say what it is. And what the, what the please forgive us for the works of the flesh, adultery, fornication. And that's right in the Bible. Look at verse 19. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness. And uh, we're going we're, we're gonna to go back to these things and try to just kind of handpick and give a little bit more definition to these issues. Idolatry, sorcery. Sorcery is a cool word in the, in the Greek language. It's the word pharmakia. And it's actually having to deal with drugs. Yeah, that I take certain medications or I can take certain, I can uh, uh, use marijuana or opioids, whatever it is. Those things that control my mind, that can control my mind. Does that make sense? Uh, hatred, contentions, jealousies. Outbursts of wrath. If I'm used to hollering, screaming, I need to confess. Lord, forgive me. All that hollering I was doing. And then sometimes we got to say, Lord, I recognize all that hollering ain't helping because it ain't changing nothing anyway. <laughs> I'm hollering, but they still doing the same thing. How, again, but he's talking about outbursts of wrath, anger. I'm hollering, I'm mad. Selfish ambition, I'm doing what I want to do. Dissension, heresies, envy. Look, he puts the word murders. Good Lord. Believers can do that? Wow. Wow. Listen, for women, not always do with a gun or a knife, but that tongue. Thank you, Henry. That tongue. Remember, James, James talked about James chapter 3, right? He say, man, there's a whole lot of stuff can be tamed, but that dog on tongue. Yeah, yeah. Woo. Drunkenness, reveries, and the like, which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Listen, listen. If I find myself, if I find myself confessing the same thing over and over, it's important now that God, to me, that's an indication that God has given me. I really need to focus on how to overcome this thing. You get what I'm saying? If it's over and over and people bring it to my attention, whatever, God is, that's an indication. God is saying, Lee, you need to focus on your temper, dude. Because you keep praying to me about your temper. It keeps controlling you. you keep, it keeps having its way with you. You need to talk to me about how to help you with that. that Makes sense? Yes. I'm sorry, Warren, go ahead. This is to believers. Again, he's, he's helping us to understand that for believers, these are the issues that are contained in the flesh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In, in other words, in other words, what, again, if, if it is an ongoing habit, I mean, people who love me tell me about it. But almost to a degree, I got an attitude, look, that, hey, look, that's just how I am. Watch this. It may be that I'm not saved. Let's just be for real. 
it may be that I'm not saved. I'm saying all the things that a believer ought to say because here is the here is the indicator. If I say this is just who I am, remember we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 says, and such were some of you. But if that's what I do habitually, and it's never, it never come to a point that I'm changing my attitude about it, I'm not changing my way. It just might be an indication that I'm not saved. Because I don't separate the inheritance of the kingdom of, of, of heaven and my salvation. I don't separate it. You know, that's, that's, well, once I trust Jesus Christ as my savior, the inheritance of the kingdom comes along with the territory. But if I don't, if, if I have the habit, a habit where, where God points it out to me, the Holy Spirit points it out to me, I hear sermons about it over and over and over again, and here it is, 25 years later, I'm still doing the same thing. The same way it might be. Because what I'm saying is there's something, guess what? My problem is one of the ones the Holy Ghost can't handle. <laughs> we know better than that, right? But that would be the attitude. Yeah, this is how I am, and you just got to accept me the way I am. Not if you say you're a Christian. It's okay for me to point that out. And I know sometimes you may tell me, hey, well, Lee, you can't judge me. I can judge that. That's something, but it sure ain't Christian. <laughs> can I get a witness? I can make a conclusion. I can show you in the Bible that is not okay with Jesus. Lee Skinner. Make sense? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, Jeff. Yeah. 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 All right. Wow. I got you. I got you. I got you. Oh, no, 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 it's not. It's not. Uh, again, Joe is saying a person, say a person think they were saved or a person gets baptized believing that it's going to wash away their sins. But they come to recognize that that's not the case. The person says, I, come to recognize, I'm not saved. Does that person get rebaptized? If, if somebody asks me that question, I'm going to say yeah. Because from a conscious standpoint, I think you're going to handle it a whole lot better if you do it again, because you know the first time you did it, it wasn't about nothing anyway. You didn't even know why you did it. You didn't fully understand why you did it. Let me put it that way. So if somebody would ask me, I'd say, yeah, oh, yeah. Man, we'll, 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 we'll get the water ready for you. Let's do it. <laughs> now, again, at that point, uh, at that point, if that person dies before they get baptized, I'm not saying that they lost their salvation. All I'm saying is that you come to the consciousness of the fact that that first time, I guess I really wouldn't. I was going with what I felt, going with what other folk told me, but I recognized I was still lost. But now that I am saved, yeah, I would like to. I would encourage that. That makes sense? Yeah, I would definitely encourage that. All right, all right. Let's do a little one more. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And then we're going to transition to our, uh, yeah, we'll... 2 Timothy chapter 3, notice again what the word of God says to us. And it's going to be verse, verse 1 through verse 5, and we'll stop there for today. 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're still talking about issues of the flesh, right? Okay, so notice again what scripture says. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will what? Be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, bolsters, proud, blasphemers. Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power from such people. He said, what? Turn away. Now watch this, watch this. Again, this is, this is what it's saying this to us in terms of us as believers. Again, what he is pointing out that this is the characteristic, if you would, of unbelievers, right? But you understand this, 
that at any day of our life, if we're not careful, if we're not led by the Holy Spirit, like Galatians 5 says, we can do this stuff. Y'all get that? Those are issues of the flesh that he's saying that there's a possibility that we can find ourselves. We can love ourselves too much on a particular day. You know, and 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 I I'd be amazed how sometimes I I as a matter of fact I I'll be I, I'm be honest with you I hear it I hear it in this church the birthday is my day since when <laughs> it's my day like really like everything you know it's, it's about no no this is the day the Lord it is always His day it is it always belongs to Him it it. But but what I'm saying is, is that when it's tinged with selfishness, I want what I want. I'm just saying we can have those momentary times in our life that we can go there. Again, lovers, lovers of ourselves, lovers of money. Y'all know we can go there. Right. It doesn't mean that we it doesn't mean that we don't we don't it doesn't, it doesn't mean that that's what we do all the time. But these are things that we got to ask God to forgive us for. Yeah, uh, boasters, Lord have mercy. Ah, 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 boasters. No matter what somebody got, I got something better. No matter what somebody did, I did something better. No matter what somebody said, I can say it better. Well, my children is the best children in the world. Your grandchildren ain't nothing like my grandchildren. You know what I'm saying? Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers. Oh, Lord, y'all, it's, it's easy for us to do these things. It's all it's saying that, that when it comes to the issue of the flesh, there's a lot we need to still confess and say that that's what it is. If, if I am prejudiced, I need to say, Lord, forgive me for being prejudiced against that person. Whatever that issue may be. Um, 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 and learn, learn through the years. And, I, and God had to help me with that. I go in hospitals. And, 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 and in my way of wanting to encourage, especially those who are, you know, those who are working, cleaning the floors and stuff like that. I'm saying, hello, how y'all doing? But y'all are doing a really good job. Keep it up, you know. But then I pass a doctor, don't say nothing to them. Like, yeah, Lee. Well, you sure you thought you was doing something? That was jacked up. <laughs> You're going to talk, talk to everybody. Tell everybody they're doing a good job. Y'all get what I'm saying? And that was just something that I'm, so, so I'm just saying the Holy Spirit helps us to identify those, those times in our life that we are not where we ought to be. The flesh is taking over and God is simply saying to us in confession, we need to say it. That's a command that we have. Say it. Don't just pray, Lord, forgive me for my sins. You know, one of my ongoing prayers is, Lord, forgive me for eating too much the wrong stuff. I got to say it, though. Lord, forgive me for eating them sausage. Stomach messed up. I'm talking about, I got a stomach ache. I know why. <laughs> I know exactly why. Somebody wants some medicine for my stomach. I know exactly why it's messed up. Ate something I wasn't supposed to eat. Lord, forgive me. Y'all see what I'm saying? But I'm saying it. Yes, Lena will be done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really? Go ahead, Neen. I heard some folks say that. They have some birthdays. Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, you do. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Honestly, don't. The, it's the, the Lord, if I got it, God gave it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's the promise he makes. Yeah. Yeah. And we got to believe those things. That's what I'm saying. It's sometimes, sometimes there are things that we say and the Holy Spirit remind us, you know, you don't believe that. You saying that, you know, you don't believe that. Are you saying that, you know, you ain't got mind to do that. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. Please forgive me. Say it though. Yes, Joe. Uh huh. Wow, Jose never celebrated birthday. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. I got you. Got it. Got it. To each his own. To each his own. But the key, the key, the the key is though, is where the selfishness can come in about things. That's the part that I that I believe that we got to be careful about of confessing is when selfishness enters in that it's got to be what I want. It's got to be like this. It's got to be like that. It has to be that. If it's not that, I'm not satisfied, which leads to other stuff. You know what it says, outbursts of anger and all of that. But that can also be a result of what I want is a result of envy because I saw somebody else with it. So I won't. You see what I'm saying? So, so there's a lot of things that the flesh won't. That I keep saying that flesh is a bad boy and a bad woman. That flesh is bad. Yeah, my biggest battle ain't the devil. My biggest battle is what happened between these two ears. That's my biggest battle, boy. I tell you, stuff with the devil. I can, I can pretty much see that pretty quick. Like, oh, okay, all right. I see where you're going with that. But boy, this flesh stuff. Y'all ever battle it while you praying? <laughs> yeah, why are you praying to God? Oh, God, forgive me, please. Where did that mess come from? <laughs> like Pastor Johnson said, that's thinking, thinking. Where did that, where did that come from? Well, nowhere close to thinking about those kinds of things. Bam, here it is. That flesh. But well, God wants us to what? Confess it. Confess it. All right. Here's what here's what I'm going to ask you all to do. And again, just uh, uh, for those of you who who have to leave, I fully understand. You know, we do this between 1130 and 1230. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is is um, uh, transition to our uh, uh, just our general report for uh, in terms of our finances and things as far as the ministry standpoint that we did on last year. For those of you that may be listening to us by way of live streaming and the like, if you're not a member of our congregation, thank you so much for uh, uh, plugging in and listening. We're getting ready to transition to transition to a church meeting, if you will. Uh, if you want to stay on, you can, no problem. Uh, but we just want to let you know this is where we are making a transition uh, for as far as our, our church is concerned, and just giving a report on things from uh, from last year. So what we're going to do is just probably take about a thirty second pause uh, for those of you that have to leave. Definitely understand for those of you that have to get off the line. We fully understand. And then when we come back in 30 seconds, we're going to go with our report. That's what we'll be doing. Thank you, Aunt Sis, for listening in. God bless you. We love you. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and again, just to do our general, what we call our general business meeting. 
Uh, just doing it this way because, again, we know that we, we last year we actually started by way of doing it by way of, uh, of uh, live streaming and the like. So the reports that you're going to see are going to be general uh, reports as far as the church is concerned. Nothing you're going to see are going to give real numbers in terms of who we are as a congregation. We're not putting that out uh, publicly, uh, but it's just a way of, again, helping you to understand a little, bit of, a, little, a, little, a little bit of an overview in terms of what God did for this church, what God did through this church uh, in uh, 2021. So if y'all would, again, just indulge with us just for a few minutes, uh, we'll be done with that. But here is the other thing. The fact that you may not get all of the information that you may like, if you call the church office, we're going to make sure that all the information, all the details that we're giving right now, you can have all of that information. That would include all the other numbers that we're not going to put out publicly. Am I making sense? So please keep that in mind. So again, when you're looking again at the, uh, the, um, uh, um, the screen, uh, you can see again, this is what God did for us. Total membership is concerned. We're at 381. We feel like that's a clean list uh, for as our church is concerned. We're all going to be asking our deacons to make sure that uh, when they call their care cells, that we are really identifying people who are members of our congregation uh, because we never ever want to uh, def inflate, never want to say we are responsible for people that God has not given us responsibility for. Uh, so again, restored memberships, we're looking at all of that. And just kind of a layout <clears throat> in terms of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the various um, additions that we did on, uh, on 2018, I mean, in 2021. Uh, I guess the only thing that I look at is uh, the sad number to me is always that issue of baptism. That's always a sad number to me. And I know uh, that's, again, a reflection on me and, again, our congregation that uh, uh, we probably need to be much more uh, uh, evangelistic-minded. I'm going to say it that way. Good next, next one, please. Here, again, is our financial report. You keep rolling. For 2021, again, annual income budget. The difference again for what we had 2021 was, was again, you see the number, 6,000. Uh, our annual expenses, we were actually under, or I'm sorry, in terms of what we, <clears throat> what we projected that we were going to raise, we actually, we actually gave, not raise, we actually gave $6,000 more than what we projected we would give in 2021. That's a big deal. Uh, we actually spent $23,000 less than we projected we would spend. And again, the, uh, the, again, the, ex, the excess income there, again, reflecting with the $30,000. The $30, pretty much, uh, it, you know, it helps us to understand that we are doing our best to handle the resources that, that are given in a proper manner. That makes sense? That's what we're trying to do. Next one, please. Keep going. Um, this is, these are the major operational costs, um, the things that we have to uh, constantly be working through. The, all, we'll say our major costs for, for 2021. Um, any, anybody want to take over our Reliant bill, please feel free to do so. We'll be so happy. We will be so happy. We will praise the Lord for you, for sure. Uh, and that's, that's kind of low, isn't it? That's sort of low in comparison to what we, we normally do. Uh, so we just again, just a reflection of, of what our, our, our major costs. Again, you see the mortgage insurance is one of the things we can't control for us, commercial insurance and uh, uh, flood, yeah, $32,000, $33,000. Woo! Woo wee I tell you. And almost every time in my mind, I said, no, nah, we ain't going to do flood insurance. I hear James Phipps. I said, okay, all right, let's keep. Let's keep paying. Let's let's keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. It's just again, just just being uh, responsible, if you would. No different than what you do at your home. Keep keep going, please. Thank you, Jewel. Uh, again, just showing major major expenses that uh, that we did have uh, in 2021. That was an acquisition that had to be uh, basically replaced. Uh, we had to do that. So um, office supplies, the janitorial things that we're looking at, all of those issues. Those are things that are costs that are necessary for how we operate ministry. It's, it's the things that um, uh, give us a certain level of convenience in terms of how we do things, and that's what those numbers reflect. Again, if you want, a, or if you want more uh, uh, information than what we have, please just call the church office and Julie will supply you the detailed information. You can keep going, Jules. This is what we did on last year. Uh, total raise again, 2021, as far as the one a day was concerned. 
uh, 14,000, close to 15,000 again. The uh, JWH again. Thank you all so much again for what you've done in JWH. I'm asking us, if you will, to, to recommit ourselves to giving toward, uh, we'll say, the one today, in particular JWH, in particular uh, for uh, JWH, that we can recommit ourselves to it, to giving there. It's a, it's a line item that you can do every week as you choose to do it. Uh, but remember, it, it does help. We do have a lot of, lot of children this past year had, what, 11 graduates? Is that what we had? What was the number? Is that right? We had like nine. But nine graduates, and so um, uh, that scholarship is really being blessed to many. So just in asking us to recommit ourselves uh, to those things. Yes, Joe, please. Yes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. uh, it, we can't, Joe, because to be honest. Our responsibility from a, we, saw it, we call it a fiduciary standpoint, is to make sure that where you want that money to go is where it goes. That's, our, that's what we have to do. That, you know, we got it on the envelope. There are some cases where sometimes that we have to, especially from a benevolent standpoint, we have to maybe take monies from somewhere because our benevolence may go low. We had a lot of funerals, we had a lot of sickness and things of that nature. But our responsibility is to make sure that we are accountable for the money you give where you want it to go. Yeah, that's that's what that's the way we have to handle it for the most part. Yes, Henry. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna re I'm gonna reiterate that Sunday, whatever that amount may be, so that all of us can know we're saying the same thing. Just gonna look at the records again and just to see what we can do. Thanks. Thanks for the question. Yes. And what else? I'm sorry, June. Keep going. Um, here again, uh, missions, uh, para ministries that we give to. Uh, these are, again, various other ministries other than Good Shepherd that we supply uh, um, funds to. I guess one of the ones that I probably need to bring us probably more up to date on would be, uh, go to the next one, Jules. Is Real Ventures on here? It's in the next thing. But again, just reflection of many other ministries that we give, we give monies to, uh, to, uh, to help them out. Really, that's all it is. You go to the next one. Again, this is, uh, this is now the, 22, the 2022 budget. Uh, as you all know, we've got a committee. And when we get the committee, you know, you all make your ministry requests and things of that nature. And we do our best to to give everybody what they requested in that ministry. And sometimes we got to make adjustments. We used to call them cuts. We try not to call them cuts. Cuts sound so rough. But we have to do those things. But even in, in light of everything that we do, just some, some issues that have come up as far as this year is concerned, we still have a deficit. We're going into the world, or into the red, like at $70,000. However, I want you all to know this. Uh, we've done this, we've done this a, a, a few times. And God has always been faithful. He has always been faithful. We have not, we've never yet come to a year to say we were short. God has always been faithful. Uh, so we again, thank you all again for those you, those ministry leaders who made those requests. And of course, the budget committee, um, again, added a, a new member this year, Sister Joanne uh, Simmons, who helped us along with Mary, um, Pastor Johnson, Andrew, Anthony, uh, Brother Edward, uh, and myself. Who did I miss? Marvin, Marvin, yeah, the financial administrator. Good Lord, I miss Marvin. Yeah, and Jules, and Jules, yeah. So we know those are the persons that are uh, at serve on our on our uh, on our committee. Let's continue to work through. Um, again, this is the envelope system. That's Joe again. That's what we. That's what we are holding to, beholden to. That whatever you, however you identify, where you want your the money you're given to go, that's where we gotta put it. That's where we have to put it. And it's only in certain situations where we'll do otherwise. Only in certain situations. That, as I said, most of the time that we have a, we have a budget for our benevolence. But sometimes, as I said, we, when we have multiple funerals or we have a lot of people that get sick, that, that benevolent fund, or we help other people, that benevolent fund can get a bit, a bit low. And it's the only fund that we will basically <clears throat> say, 
out of the general fund, we need to put something back in the benevolent fund. There's no other fund that we basically do that with other than that one. Am I saying it right, y'all? Okay. okay. At, the, at the bottom of the envelope, yeah, at the discretion of the leadership. But as I said, it's rare that we do it. It's only when it's necessary. And so I would ask us as much as possible, focus on benevolence. You know, uh, whether it's once a month, whatever, because whatever you give will help. Whatever you give will help. And remember, it's designed to help. It's designed to help. Yes, Brother Edward. Yes. Got it. Got it. Got it. Brother Edward, just bring it to our attention again as much as you possibly can. You know, whatever, whatever monies you put in, make sure you designate where you want it to go. Who you, you know, what, what area you wanted to go to, because there are times that you all may forget. And we just, again, so we have to, again, go through the process of calling you to find out, you know, if it's yours, where you wanted to go, that kind of thing. And it doesn't happen a lot, but we're just encouraging you all to pay, you know, pay attention to what you're, you're doing as it relates to how you do the envelope. Next one, Jules. And we're probably going to, let's see, uh, give it online. Again, we know what to do. If again, for any member that doesn't know what to do with that, you can always call the church office. Uh, Julia, uh, Stefan will work you through whatever that needs to be uh, to make sure that is done. Uh, keep going, keep going. Same thing uh, as far as our, our giving is concerned. Uh, any other questions? I think you, we had some. Joe, uh, uh, Henry, you ask. Uh, anybody else? Any other questions? As far as our finances are concerned. Okay. All right. We're almost done. It's almost done. Here yeah, are ministries, and uh, just going to just focus on that for a moment. These are, this is still the way that we're doing things right now. Sunday school in person for our children and youth ministry. Wednesday Bible study is still by Zoom only. So parents, grandparents, we're asking you to help us uh, to make sure that your children are uh, into those various Bible studies. They have homework in school, and they have homework here. So please, by all means, uh, give them that that work that they uh, uh, allow them to be exposed, if you would, uh, from the standpoint of the Zoom, because that's the only way they can have the Wednesday Bible study for right now, because we know there's not a whole lot of adults that are coming to the Wednesday Bible study. So if that's not happening with adults, we know it's not going to happen with the children. Yeah. Keep going. All right. Again, remember, uh, we're encouraging everybody that will come be a part of the, the opportunity that we have, the partnership that we have with the, uh, the Houston Food Bank. It's a wonderful experience, a wonderful time. Uh, we laugh, we joke, we sweat. Sometimes we get wet, depending on the rain. <laughs> but we have a great time. So I encourage those of you who haven't have come out, let's come on out and uh, just be a part of, uh, of what's happening uh, uh, on the first Saturday of every month. You going? No, no, you good? You good? This is this is what we did on last year. Uh, Thirteen hundred and seventy families uh, in partnership with the uh, the Houston Food Bank, and uh, we believe again this uh it, and it's probably a little bit more, but these are the records that we because we actually you know we did a couple of times that it rained, and I'm not sure if we if we manage all of those records like, but that's what we definitely know. Uh, Thirteen hundred and seventy families. Uh, yeah, come on, come on, yeah. That's it. That's that's a that's praiseworthy. That's kind of a reflection of of how it happens, what we do, the signs we put out, and the hope is like like you say when we're done, the truck is empty. That's always the goal, Joe. We make sure that truck is empty. Yeah, yeah. And the Lord has blessed us that you know after and you see the cars that you know that the way they park on North uh, North Wayside and 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 on uh, Bonaire, and of course the last 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 few months. Uh, Henry Henry Smith has been the one help facilitate to get people in and get people out. I'm serious. It is a joyous day. It honestly is from 7:30 to 12 o'clock. Man, we are, we have and to see people blessed that way. That's just it's such a great joy, uh, you know, for us to. Uh, so again, just kind of giving you uh, some some uh, um, insight into what's happening on that uh, Saturday. You can keep rolling, Jules. Excellent. You keep going, keep going. Y'all do remember we had the, uh, the partnership with the, uh, the food bank when we did the thing about cooking, and that's some of us who participated in the cooking. I can't say I cooked since then. 
Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I did. I did. <laughs> yeah, but those are those are just opportunities that we had uh, uh, to be able to uh, to participate in that. And we're very grateful for the food bank uh, that we did get some we did get some gifts. We had some, you know, um, pots and pans and bakeware that they gave to us as a result of our participation. So that was really nice of them. Yeah. Keep going. But that was just one of the even one of the things that we took advantage of. Of course, you know, with the with the hurricane that happened in New Orleans and also in uh, in Lake Charles, uh, we did. I'm sorry, we didn't put Lake Charles up there. We should have done that. We did give contributions as far as the church was concerned uh, to uh, to bless, and we did it with several churches uh, in the in the in the Houston area. Sent out an uh, email, a text uh, to uh, some of the pastors or some of the churches that we know, and they participated. You know, again, we're not putting those numbers out because you know all we're saying is is that we did help. We wanted to know that uh, uh, the church that you that God has allowed you to serve in. Uh, we believe in helping people. And so we wanted, just wanted to identify that. We can keep going. Again, uh, funerals. Again, you know, the, the, we, uh, right now, for, I guess for 31 years now, I fill out a calendar to put the calendar together for the churches. I have never yet scheduled a funeral. But they happen. They come. And when they come, we've got to deal with them. Um, I just want to encourage us. And let me, I'm just saying this, and, I, and I'm not being, I'm, God knows I'm not being insensitive when I say this. I see now there's, a, there's much more of a push right now. A lot of people uh, want funerals to be in churches. And I, I'm going to say this. I'm, I'm going to say this. Uh, having a funeral in a church for a person who doesn't believe in Jesus, don't put that person in heaven. Having a funeral for a person who has not put their faith, their confidence in Jesus Christ. Having a funeral at a church for a person who didn't want to go to church, don't do anything for that person. So I'm just, I just, just, you know, because every now and then we get those requests, and uh, people will ask me, and I just, I often just ask that question, what's the point? Why do we want to do that? What message are we sending when it happens? Yeah, I tell people, I will do the funeral. I do it at, I, I, my, prefer, my preference would be to do it at a, at a funeral home. But I'd be glad to serve you. But, you know, when we have those situations, that again, you all are members of this church family. And as a, as a member of this, uh, this church family, that's a privilege that you have. And so if you say, I want my loved one's funeral to be here, I promise you, we're going to do it. We'll accommodate. However, I just want people to just think about that. Because the Bible, you know, we look at that verse. This is the last thing it says in verse 18. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. If you're having a funeral of an unbeliever, who's comforted? What comfort do you take in a funeral for an unbeliever? Where are they going? Am I making sense? I'm not trying not to be insensitive when I say these kinds of things, but it's just the reality. And as I said, I, you know, I thank God for you all as far as the members are concerned. It is not something that y'all push. Look, Pastor, I don't care what you say. My, my family going to be funeralized at Good Shepherd. We've had some of these conversations. Y'all have said differently. And I praise God for you all because, as I say, at the end of the day, we're all going to serve. But I still say to you all, what's the point? Yeah, yeah, keep going. We know, again, we've got a new conference call, um, and we're going to continue to, to do in that um, every Monday. We're asking, again, for you participate in the prayer time uh, that we have. You all did very well on this uh, past, past Monday. Uh, I, I, just, I just like to listen to the pings at the end. Ping, ping, ping. Say, oh, wee. Oh, they're on the line. Oh, they're on the line, you know. And what I do know is that at the end of the day, when we get the report, do I, do I, do I just see um, uh, quote unquote, the number for for uh, uh, I'm just using it just by way of illustration. Though I just see the number Clarence Wills, I know that represents some other people. What I'm so I look at it from a standpoint that whatever I see is doubled because it, hopefully it's the family for the most part that's engaging in uh, in the prayer time. Keep going. Okay, calendar of events. Um, we asking. We we're gonna keep asking y'all. Whatever you know you got going on right now, we need it from the men. Michael Mims, we need the report from the men uh, for whatever the events are going to be planned for February. Uh, we need in that as soon as possible, brother. Uh, so that's just a way, again, of whatever it is that we've got going on, we ask that we do 30 days ahead of time. Keep going. We're almost done. Almost done. That's still, that's still our theme, y'all. Each one lead one to Jesus. Each one lead one to Jesus. 
Uh, I think what it, you remember what that number showed, 381. If every one of us led one somebody to Jesus, we wouldn't have room to put the folk. <laughs> and, and I said led them to Jesus in, this, in terms of led them, disciple them, that again, they become part of our, of our church family because it doesn't mean that everybody you lead to Jesus is going to join our church. That, we're not saying that at all. Uh, but it was just saying is that we could, we could, we could have more, more uh, uh, um, uh, uh, for members in quantity if we just did our part in uh, in leading folk to Christ. Yeah, keep going. Any questions? Yes, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes, man. 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 I've said it so many times. So many times. Um, and so that just sometimes we just got to just kind of, okay, let's, let's get our focus. Let's go at it. <clears throat> Stay focused on what they're saying. Because, you know, I said, I, I, you know, ever since the, this, uh, this whole thing with the pandemic and stuff started, you know, prayer conference calls and Zooms and all of that kind of thing, man, somebody could write a pretty nice book on some of the things you hear, what's going on. I tell you, boy, because I, I li I've listened sometimes to the, uh, the conference call that, you know, during the worship that we, you know, we, we weren't always coming. And Lord, I tell you, some of the stuff I'm hearing in the background, you're like, good gracious. Go, go, go get some bread. <laughs> Cut that meat off. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. My God. <laughs> it's going to be some serious stuff going on. Shut up. You don't, don't be hollering. Don't be, be hollering at me. Like, oh, 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 my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It'd be, it be something on that conference line, I tell you. It'd be something. <laughs> You don't know what you're going to hear. Like, okay, Lord, let me listen to this sermon. Let me just keep listening to Pastor Johnson. Who we? Yeah, look, next, next thing. We're done. We're, you're done. Keep going, Jules. You can, uh, again, we know our ministry leaders for right now. We always say, uh, if you've served for three years, if you have a desire to, uh, to step down, you can feel free to do so. Um, I'm going to try to persuade some of y'all otherwise. But, you know, that's if you felt like you've served well enough, long enough. This is it. That's a reflection again of those ministry leaders right now of some of them that we've listed. Keep going. That ain't funny. That ain't, that ain't nowhere funny. Julia just said, Zach, he'll say he read it. I, I, Y'all see, I ain't laughing. That, that ain't nowhere funny. Yeah. <laughs> again, uh, this year, and I was supposed to have done it last year, and I didn't do it when I should have. Uh, I'm going to get with uh, brother, brother Ben, and we're going to set a date and a time for us to ordain Michael Mim Sr. and Oscar Dunham. Uh, we need to do that. They're already deacons. We just need to make it official uh, in terms of uh, the biblical ordination that God has given us to, uh, to do. Uh, keep going. That's it. We're done. Listen, thank y'all for y'all patience. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Watch this. Watch this. Any question right now on anything? Yes, Anna. Yeah, once you come on, yeah, you don't have to. No, no. Yeah, there you go. That's perfect. Really, that's perfect. I mean, once you, once you, once you, uh, you pick up the phone, when you, when you know, once you dial in and they say that it's already going on and you got, like Mary said, you have 30 people that are already on, don't announce your name. Don't say it. But understand, we have the report that helps us to know we know you're on there. Even if you don't say your name, once the conference call is done, Julia can generate a report and we see that you have participated. Amen? It goes to give your name and your number, especially with the new one we had. That old one, we couldn't do it anymore. But the new one, we, can, we definitely got a report. It's in, as a matter of fact, sitting on my desk right now. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, Mayor. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and can do that a little bit more in between. Mute your line, mute your line, mute your line, mute your line. And I keep saying we could write a book on this stuff. It'd be so interesting. It'd be so interesting, you know. But, but yeah, we're just encouraging us to do that as much as possible uh, to, uh, to mute our line as, as best we can. And the other thing is, is that if you, if you, if you got to be on the phone, sometimes you just turn your phone. Because sometimes you have some heavy breathing be on there. Like, Lord, it can be a distraction, but we got to focus on what we really dare to do. And that's to pray to God. Amen. Yeah, so if it's not a perfect situation, we got to make the adjustments we need to make. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, let's close in prayer. Um, and what I'm going to do now is, is actually close us out in a prayer that we have already talked about. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 1, we were saying that, remember, there are a lot of things we pray, but we want to come to a point that we pray. It's going to be every Sunday, every Wednesday. Monday night when we pray, that before we leave, we will have prayed one of the prayers out of Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 3, or Colossians chapter 1. Let's just do that uh, as, we, as, we, uh, as we close out. Father, we have uh, <clears throat> we brought a lot of, lot of different names to your attention. Uh, we have our continued prayer concerns that we have on a daily basis, a weekly basis, uh, that Julia generates. And we see those names, and sometimes we don't think even to pray for those people. Uh, but Lord, we know that they're going through some physical ailments, some mental situations that are taking place. But more than anything, Father, we will not cease to give thanks for all believers and to remember them in our prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give them the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of you, Lord. Having the eyes of their hearts enlightened that they may know what is the hope to which you have called them. What are the riches of your glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of your power toward us who believe? According to the working of your great power that you worked in Jesus Christ. When you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this age but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to us, the church, which is his body, the fullness of Jesus Christ, who fills all in all, which you, we give you thanks today and pray these things in the name of Jesus, who is our Christ. Amen. Once again, thank you all so much for engaging at this particular time. Lord willing, we'll see you all uh, Sunday morning at, uh, at 9 a.m. And again, encouraging those of you who haven't, please remain for Sunday school. Until we meet again, God bless you. Good night. Take care. Done. That's it.